Hi everybody, Hummingbird027 here. Welcome to the Passover video. So I said that I was going to do a live version and I'm going to do the live version, but it is an Alaska time, which um, I am a person who believes in the in-between evenings of in the Nissan 14 day. So we're gonna get into a little bit of that here, but I wanted to do this video for two reasons. The first being that there's a lot of contentious uh, viewpoints out there of the time and date of and whether Jesus died in the day of preparation or died in the day of Passover. So I'm not getting into all of that. I have studied the Bible, um, which I believe being led by the Holy Spirit. So I am in the belief that that time happened at evening as the Nisan 14 was coming to a close. And so the second reason I'm making this video is because um, I realize that people live in different time zones. Uh, evening of the 14th does not take part, does not happen until 9.20 p.m. on Friday night. So I realize that a lot of people who are in New York and all those other areas, sunset has long since happened. So I wanted to make this video so maybe somebody out there might want to, you know, have the video going. If they're, this is your first Passover, this might be helpful to you. I'm going to try and walk you through everything that I do. Also, I'm going to do the live version. I'm hoping, praying that this will be a blessing to you and do this at 9.20 on the evening of Friday. So... There will be a live event tomorrow. Hopefully it will go off without a hitch. Otherwise, I'll be celebrating Passover on my own again. <laughs> but anyway, folks, this is also for your encouragement and understanding. So let's talk a little bit about the process, I believe, to go through the 14th day and your preparations for that Passover evening. So I wanted to go over some key scriptures and just kind of give you um, some thoughts to think about if you've been taught something different. And let's start with Matthew chapter 26 and verse 20, where it states, Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. This was after he told the disciples to go into the city and find the guy who's carrying the pitcher of water and to ask him that the master wants to come to his house to hold the Passover um, at the appointed time. And so this is where it all gets tricky and a lot of translations translate this all differently. I'm not gonna get into arguments here. I just wanna make sure that everybody knows it's the evening that is being talked about here and you can go to Leviticus 23 and verse 5 through 8, which states, In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So that is at evening in the fourteenth day. A lot of people try to translate this and say that it's, um, so tonight is, would be the 13th of Nisan, that they would start this at evening of the 13th and saying that that was the time frame. I don't agree with that because of Leviticus and also in Exodus chapter 20, no, Exodus chapter 12, verses 6 through 1. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. This is the Passover lamb. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel sh shall kill it in the evening. So it's always in the 14th day at evening. That's how I interpret it. And that's how I've continued to do this uh, for since 2008. So that's when I first did my only by myself Passover. So I just wanted to kind of clear that up a little bit. So hopefully if I have a little bit of time today so I can put this up, 
um, hopefully before sunset, get this uploaded. I want to also kind of walk you through how I make unleavened bread. I know a lot of people do not do this. Um, I make my own unleavened bread for this uh, ceremony, this celebration of the Lord, the remembrance of Him. Um, instead of using matzo crackers. I know a lot of people do that. I also am not going to do the Seder. Um, I believe it's very lengthy and drawn out. And maybe Yeshua had did this in his time. I do not know. At this time, it's Shemitah. I don't have a lot to choose from as far as um, fresh parsley or stuff like that. As for bitter herbs, I would substitute it for other things like garlic and onions. But for the most part, um, I'm just going to do the way I initially did Passover uh, my first time back in 2008. So according to the Bible, you're actually supposed to um, basically roast your meat that you're eating. I have actually never, never had lamb, um, so never in my life have I tasted lamb, which is weird. But um, I plan on getting lambs at some point, so hopefully if I can find some land and do all that, I can get some... Uh, lambs and be able to partake of that in the future, but not this time. It's going to be beef. Um, it'll be a beef ribeye steak, actually. So, and then it says in Exodus chapter 12, verse 7, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread. This is the Passover night in the 15th. There is a time frame of in between the evenings that occurs. We're going to get to that in a minute. Verse 9, eat not, back up verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinences thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Several things um, taken here is you're supposed to roast what you're cooking on fire. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of that. We're going to barbecue some ribeye steaks, and I'll show you that. And also, during this remembrance, Whatever you don't eat of it, this is kind of important. I've been doing this since 2008, like I said. I will take whatever I have not eaten, even if it's little um, things of fat that you don't want to eat or too hard to eat. Um, I will actually put that in fire and I will burn it. So I have a fireplace and I will burn all of that. And so I will show you as much of this as I possibly can. And hopefully this video will be a good video for all of you, especially if this is your first time doing Passover. It gets really interesting. Um, you have to do a lot of homework for sure uh, because there's contradictions in the Bible, but the Bible does not contradict itself. You actually have to go back into how these people lived, how they did their lives, and these ceremonies that took place, um, what was really going on in that day at that time. So hopefully this will be enjoyable for you. So I'm going to show you right now how to make uh, some bitter herbs that you might scrounge up and have with your Passover Seder meal. I'll be cooking a lot of these herbs uh, with the roast, with the actual um, ribeye steak that I'm going to be using. And then later on, I'm going to show you how to make some unleavened bread. So I do have a couple of red onions here 
from my Shemitah harvest of last year. So that was really cool that God has let me be able to keep these. So basically, I just want to chop them up just like you would any normal shallot. I've been finding out that since I've been keeping Shemitah, a lot of the foods that I had prepared um, have been keeping a very long time without any help from me. So I'm thanking the Lord for that. Others uh, got expired long before Shemitah, after Shemitah even started. So. so I'm going to use two of these little red onion bulbs for this meal. And I'm just gonna put them into slivers. I'm not gonna like mince them. show you is I bought a whole bunch of dehydrated minced garlic. Um, garlic is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite bulbs. And so how I will be using this in this recipe is I will be putting a whole bunch in a bowl and then I will fill it up with water and let it uh, rehydrate and then all of that will be combined together with the onions that I'm going to be putting on my steak. So I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but garlic, if you've ever eaten it, is pretty darn bitter. <laughs> so that is going to be my go-to for bitter. And I use red onions because they have a slightly bitter taste to them as well. For the other bitter herb I am using, this is some horseradish that I did buy for last Passover in 2021. And it basically is dehydrated in my refrigerator all this time for over a year. So I ended up cutting off a piece of it and I'm going to let it hydrate with the rest of the uh, other spices. Other bitter herbs, I should say. So here we are on the back porch, and I just got this new grill. <laughs> it actually folds up into a suitcase, so I thought that was pretty cool. Got it on course Amazon. So I'm going to put my little paper there and get my wood. You guys know how to build a fire, right? just show you here lint. Lint is like the easiest way to start a fire and you always have a lot of it after you do laundry so just saying. Going to light my lint on fire which catches very quickly. And 
so it's just basically a waiting game. Gonna get some nice coals going. This is what it means when it talks about roasting it on the fire in Exodus chapter 12, verse, let's see, verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. So this is our roasting with some bitter herbs we're going to add to it. beautiful out here today. Not a cloud in the sky. Maybe I'll show you around here in a little bit. So, I'm going to kind of fast forward all of this video because I still want to get it put up in a reasonable hour. my already pre-seasoned ribeye steak here. I'm just going to throw it on there and get started. You might see an occasional butterfly flying around me because uh, it's spring thaw and they call it breakout, breakup out here in Alaska. And basically what that means is that everything starts melting very quickly and all of these exposed areas underneath trees uh, means a lot of caterpillars come out and they do their little cocoon thing and they become butterflies like within the first few weeks of April. It's really cool to watch because they're everywhere. pretty quickly. This is the first time I have cooked on this, so welcome. <laughs> now that I've got it kind of seared on one side, and I'll put a little bit of my bitter herbs on here. I'm going to be saving some for tomorrow night when I do the real Passover. So like I said, this is just for you um, who are in different time zones um, or who celebrate this uh, tonight. So I thought I'd read while we're waiting a little bit of Matthew. Chapter 26, <clears throat> and starting in verse 17, Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is yet at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Yeshua has appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he said, he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It has been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. 
And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many of the rem for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That's pretty cool. And I want to make sure this is thoroughly cooked because God said don't eat the blood that's in your meat. Um, so this is going to be a well done <laughs> steak. Another thing I'd like to talk about is in Exodus chapter 12, this feast was to be kept for all generations, as as many of his other feasts. And because he's uh, told us to do this, it's not just in Passover to remember him and what he's done for us, but also we're going to be keeping these feasts in the millennial kingdom reign. Just read Ezekiel chapter 40 to the end of the book. It's pretty clear that yeah, we're going to be doing these in those days. Keeping these feasts, I should say. Let me put this in here without killing a fire. And so the reason why I say that is because in Exodus chapter 12 verse 14 and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever it is forever we are going to be keeping this feast why because we are going to be grateful for our Savior our Redeemer that came and did this suffered through his passion so that we could all be with him forever forever that means what it means folks a lot of Christians do believe that these days were done away with uh, but I think you're wrong um, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile whatever you affiliate with um, everyone is going to be keeping this in the millennial reign of Christ we know this because in Ezekiel, it tells us that Egypt stopped keeping the feasts for some reason, and they got punished for it. They cut, they forgot to come up and share with the Lord and worship the Lord on the Feast of Tabernacles, and they did get punished for it. And so, yes, we are going to be commanded to keep these feasts, so we should be doing them now. Just saying. So again, Exodus 12, starting in verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day. This is the lamb without blemish that doesn't have broken legs, no broken bone in him at all. Of the same month, 
and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roasted with fire. The head, his head with his legs and with the pertinences of thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire, and thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hands, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. A lot of people like to uh, reenact what took place with the Israelites, and they do eat with their shoes on and all that, so... Um, it's up to you how you want to remember the Lord and what the children of Israel did when they left Egypt. Verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Verse 14, And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. And whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you, no matter no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day, day of the month at even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses for whosoever eateth that which is leavened even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel whether he be a stranger or born in the land Ye shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Folks, it's pretty clear what the Lord is saying here. We don't need to think too deep into this.
Okay, so I'm going to make the most basic of unleavened bread. And just so you know, um, I did get, uh, prior to Shemitah, I did get a bunch of the cheap salt until I could save up enough money to get the Redmond salt. So this is the last of this salt that I'm using. This is my recipe for unleavened bread. It is the most simplest thing. You can choose to make it however you want. You can add milk, mine is flour, salt, water. That is like the basic of basic for leavening. In my mind, thinking about the Israelites and running out of Egypt, they knew they were gonna to have to get ready to go. And so they had to throw together dinner really quickly using just the barest of essentials. They didn't have time to make things rise. It takes hours to cook leavened bread and all that stuff. So they basically made unleavened bread and they just threw in whatever they could to make it quick, simple, and easy. That's what this is. Instead of water, you can put in milk. You can also add egg. Um, lots of people add lots of different things. So just continue to try and uh, experiment, I guess is the word. Um, it took me years to come up with these recipes. So one cup, two cups of flour. I'm just gonna make a small batch today. And I like a lot of salt. I like my leavening to taste a little salty. So typically, I will only do one teaspoon of salt to this and then add water and mix it together. But because I like salt, I'm a salty kind of person, I add two. One per cup. All right, so I, if I find my little, we'll mix it all together dry before I add my water. That way it's pretty much evenly dispersed. And then I'm going to turn on my electric to about 350, between 350 and 375. Then I'm going to add about a cup of water. I make mine a little bit more runny because it likes to tend to stick together better and you don't waste the water or the flour. So it basically all comes together really beautifully. And I have my hair in here. Isn't that great? Okay. So here is my unleavened bread. And I'm just gonna kinda give it a once over here in the bowl so I can suck up any more of that flour I can get in there. And all the little pieces. And I've got my leavening ball here. flour the surface of my counter and then what I'm going to do is take a piece about a handful size flour it and I am going to mash it in here now at this point I haven't yet made my roller and I really want to, but I just haven't had time yet. So what I've been doing is using a cup.
I want to make it as thin as I possibly can because then that way it actually is going to be cooked thoroughly when I add it to the pot. And it's okay that it has holes in it, no biggie. So these two cups will give you basically three unleavened breads. You don't want to burn them, you just want to brown them. They burn pretty quickly if you don't watch them. So make sure you are watching the bottom of these. That could have went a little bit longer. That's what you're looking for right there, the little browns. There's a little heart right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I can zoom in there. I don't know if you can see that right there. There's like a little heart. That's kind of cool. Anyway. We can see that the other side is just as beautiful, well browned, so that's what we are looking for.
and crank it up a little bit more to 375. See if we can't get it cooking a little bit faster. Oh, but don't it taste good? Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. longer on that side. That looks good. Nice and brown. We want that on the other side too. What I like to do is kind of like a personal preference <laughs> is I like to get um, order linen napkins and this is basically set aside just for Passover. So when I find that I have the exact leaven bread that I want to keep, I will put it over here and allow it to sit until I am ready to break bread at Passover. I do like to try and save um, all the extra flour that I have, you know, waste not, what not. Mm. 
Oh yeah, that looks like a nice brown right there. I did tear that one, so I don't really want to use that one. We're going to go ahead and use this nice one here. And then that will keep that fresh until the Passover meal begins. And you can nibble on the other ones. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. The other things you can do with flatbread like this is you can make pizzas during Passover. I love making pizzas during Passover. It is so delicious. And if you have an air fryer, it makes them super crispy. I love it. So there it is, unleavened bread. Bread I will eat throughout the whole week of unleavened bread is made like this. This is my special bread I'm going to eat for my uh, ceremony and remembrance of our Lord and Savior. So I'm hoping you can see this. I have my roasted meat which is ribeye. I know it's supposed to be lamb, but I've never eaten lamb, like I said. I need to get into doing that. I have my unleavened bread, I have an egg, and I have my green beans that from my store. And I also have some Worcestershire sauce because those are part of the bitter herbs. And I did cook my meat, roast it in bitter herbs. So like I said, this video is meant to just breaking the newbie to kind of show you what I do and maybe you can find your own way with the Holy Spirit's help. At this point, um, this is what I've done since the beginning in 2008 since I've been doing these on my own and so this is an opportunity now for me to share my time with you. Uh, for people who are outside of my time zone, I am in Alaska, so I'm kind of like out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and so my time at sunset tomorrow, which is the 14th of Nisan at sunset, I will be having Passover at 9.20 p.m. So that means that a lot of you are already probably going to be in bed at this point or have done with your Passover meal. So this is a video mostly for people who want to share in that time in between the evenings as it's stated to us in the Old Testament. So I'm hoping that this will be good for you. So yes, I am just going to imagine it is in between the evenings right now. So it would be the 14th of sunset right now at 920. I'm going to be scarfing down my food basically and then I'm going to go into reading about Yeshua and the events that led up to the Passover and then I will be also partaking of the wine which is his blood shed for the remissions of our sins and also for breaking the bread which is um, his healing for our bodies. So hopefully you can hang in here with me while I do all of this. Oh, my battery's about ready to die. It's okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to be eating everything in haste. My battery's almost dead, so it might not make it.
So, I just got finished with my meal, ate in hastiness, and whatever is left over from that meal that I did not consume, which is like little gritty pieces, fat pieces, I will burn that in my wood burning stove and clean all the dishes up and leave that as clean as I can make it. And I always like to finish off after the meal uh, what Matthew 26 talks about and I'll walk you through it and we'll do part of that celebration. We got our bread and we also have our wine. So Matthew 26 and we will start Let's start in verse 1. And it came to pass when Yeshua had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Yeshua by subtlety and kill him. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Yeshua was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman, having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yeshua understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me you have not always." For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Isn't it funny that this woman knew what Yeshua was going to be experiencing very soon, but his disciples knew not. Verse 13, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also that this woman hath done be told for a memorial for her. Everybody will remember her forever. It's pretty cool. Verse 14, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, and said unto them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they commanded with him, they covenanted with him, for thirty pieces of silver, and from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Yeshua, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Verse 18, And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Yeshua had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Verse 20, Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto the Lord, Is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth, as it is written of him, but woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, 
This is my body. So I'm going to take my bread and I am breaking it. And if you have other people in your area around you, um, you would definitely share with them. So we're going to bless this bread. Yahweh bless this bread from the wheat of your earth so that we could have unleavened bread this day. Your Passover, our Lord, thank you. In Yeshua HaMashiach's precious and holy name, thank you, Lord, for his body. And in verse 27, And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Yahweh, bless this, bless this wine, your fruit of the vine. Thank you, Lord, for your sons shed blood for our sins, the remission of our sins. Thank you for redeeming us, Yahweh. Bless this wine, Father. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you, in my Father's kingdom. Pretty cool. And when they had sung in hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Yeshua said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Yeshua with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh up, cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not with me one hour? Watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and praying, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that do betray me, that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude of swords and staves. 
from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith came, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, there, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yeshua and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yeshua stretched out his hands and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Yeshua unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray and my father to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be filled, that thus it must be? In that same hour said Yeshua to the multitudes, Are you come out against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and you laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And they that had laid hold on Yeshua led him away into Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed afar off. <laughs> Matthew 26, verse 58. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Yeshua to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto them, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But Yeshua held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of Yahweh. Yeshua saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now we have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ. Who is he that smote thee? Now Peter sat without the palace, and the damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Yeshua of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not whom thou sayest. And when he was gone out onto the porch, another maid saw him, and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Yeshua of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man, and after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words of Yeshua, which said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly.
Haven't we all been there and done that? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 27. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Yeshua to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Yish Yish Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and that I betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and brought with them, bought with them a potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this very day. Then the fulfilled that which was spoken by a Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for a potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. I have to say, I wonder what's going to happen with that field. Will it be rediscovered here during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ? Yeshua. Just a thought. Cross my mind. It's very emotional for me, so I'm sorry in advance if I start bawling. <laughs> Matthew 27, verse 11, And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Yeshua said unto him, Thou sayest, and when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then saith Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witnessed against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast, the governor who want to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Yeshua, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him, Yeshua. When he was set down on the judgment, See, his wife was sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Yeshua. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether the twain will be ye that I release unto you, they said Barabbas. <clears throat> Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Yeshua, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. That is unbelievable. Verse 26, Then he released Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Yeshua, he delivered him to be crucified. 
Then the soldiers of the governor took Yeshua into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. <clears throat> and after that they mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own garments on him raiment on him, can't read through tears, <laughs> and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come in unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of the skull, that was where um, David slew Goliath, and his skull was said to be so ginormous <laughs> that uh, they called it the place of the skull where he slayed him. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when they, he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation, written, This is Yeshua, the King of the Jews. Then were the two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in Yahweh. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land, unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Yeshua cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, this man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let, be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Yeshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Yeshua saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. 
And many women were there, beholding afar off, which followed Yeshua from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Yeshua's disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Yeshua. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in a rock. <clears throat> and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that thou, that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, You have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. In the end of the Sabbath, it is, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Yeshua, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And, be <clears throat> and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear, and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Yeshua met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Yeshua unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught, and this saying is commonly reported among the Jews to this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Yeshua had appointed them, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Yeshua came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven.
and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Um, so folks, that was Matthew chapter 28. I do believe I said it incorrectly, that it was Mark, and it was Matthew that I was referring to there. So that was Matthew chapter 26 through 28. I can never get through those chapters without bawling my eyes out. <laughs> so please forgive me. <sighs> so that's it. That's how I observe Passover. That's what I end up doing. I will end up eating on the rest of this bread for the rest of the night. Obviously, I will finish my wine as well. I just don't drink it very fast. But I hope you have learned something valuable uh, from these videos. This video, it's a collection of videos I'm doing before I edit them, which will become one singular video. And I hope that this blesses you and increases your relationship with the Lord and so that maybe next year if the rapture has not happened come this fall feast of trumpets um, maybe next year we can all get together again and spice it up just a little bit more folks I love you all so very dearly thank you for coming by to watch and please share this with whomever you can possibly share this with Please get the word out that Yeshua is coming soon. We don't have much time left. Yahweh bless you all. Maranatha everyone and keep looking up. Our redemption draweth nigh. I love you.